Let's say you want to build and launch your own satellite. Well, you basically need to build a tiny hardened spaceship with a lot of sensitive robotic components that can function all on its own in the harsh environment of space. No problem, right? These instructions are not intuitive. Oh, and you also need to be prepared to never see your creation again. Once your satellite is launched, that's it. If it breaks, tough luck. But what if there were a way to give your satellite a tune-up once it's reached orbit and needs some help? It's a dream of many satellite operators who have lost their hardware in space, and it's something that a fledgling industry is trying to address. Today, you really have to plan ahead when building your satellite. Above all, it needs to be super robust. Satellites encounter wild temperature swings from freezing to sweltering while orbiting around Earth. They also encounter higher amounts of radiation and energized particles coming from the sun. We talked to two satellite repair experts, Charity Whedon and Jonathan Goff, about what it takes to survive in orbit. So you have to uh, build in a little bit of redundancy, uh, have reliable parts, uh, design it correctly, test it. We call it the shake and bake, you know, shake it on a table, you know, cook it a little bit, see if, see if anything falls apart that way as well. Even if you test and test, things still just break when in space, which is bad for your company's bottom line, but also dangerous. An inoperable satellite instantly becomes space junk, zooming around Earth at upwards of 17,000 miles per hour. And that's bad for everyone else. And the scariest thing is dead satellites can't dodge. So eventually, if you get enough debris up there, the odds of a dead satellite hitting another dead satellite increases. Enter satellite servicing. It's actually not a new concept. We've tweaked satellites in orbit before, but people were usually involved in the process. The Hubble Space Telescope has been upgraded numerous times while in orbit by astronauts who arrived via NASA's space shuttle. But with the shuttle now retired, there isn't a way for astronauts to meet up with satellites. The solution? Create robots that can do what the humans do. And that's a tad more complicated. First, you need a satellite that can meet up with another satellite in orbit, which is no easy task. Remember, these satellites are moving at super high speeds. This requires sophisticated navigation and control software, as well as sensors that can tell the satellite how close it's getting to another object. The next challenge is grabbing the broken satellite. That's even trickier, because the satellites in orbit today haven't been built to be grappled. That's why companies in the satellite servicing industry are really working on two things, the repair bot and the interface between the bot and its target. We basically fell in love with the concept of magnetic grappling. Jonathan's company, Altius Space Machines, has developed a magnetic grappling plate designed to be added to the outside of a satellite. On the plate are identifiable markings that make it easier for an approaching satellite to figure out where the plate is and attach via its own magnets. We have some solid state switchable magnet technology we're working on. Um, so you can stick to it with the magnet pretty well. Charity's company, Astroscale, is pursuing a similar path. One benefit of this method is that it's easy for the two satellites to disconnect once the update is complete. Unlike other grappling methods like, say, harpoons, there's less chance of any extra damage or debris created during the process. To test out this grappling method, Astroscale is launching a demonstration mission this year, which will send up both a servicing satellite and a target with the plate on it. They want to practice a variety of tasks, including disposal, knocking their target closer to Earth so that it meets a fiery death in the atmosphere. And we'll conduct a series of demonstrations of uh, attaching with it, losing lock with it, and then searching for it autonomously, and then finally deorbiting the, uh, the mock piece of debris. Taking satellites out of orbit this way could become crucial, as more companies vow to send hundreds or even thousands of satellites into space, knowing that a small percentage will fail. Once connected, a servicer could do quite a bit. It could refuel a satellite, nudge it into a different orbit, do a software update, or even replace a broken part. Satellites today are not built like cars, though. There's no opening to their fuel tanks or a hood that you can lift. But Jonathan says it's possible to make future generations of satellites more accessible and upgradable. You know, laptops aren't really that friendly to open up and swap components out most of the time. 
but they do have a lot of expansion ports on the side. You know, so it's like, oh, you need to, you know, plug in a, you need to plug in a mouse. You can plug in a mouse in the USB port, or it could be an external hard drive, or it could be some other peripheral. So we're trying to start pushing in that direction. Of course, any new technology could be used in a nefarious way. Concerns have been raised in the press that satellite servicing could be weaponized and used to take out a functioning satellite rather than fix one in need. Charity argues that space really needs to be cleaned up, not turned into a battlefield. We continue to talk to people around the world about the, the benefits of having satellite servicing and debris removal in particular. So this is not something that uh, we take lightly. It's a responsibility for us to make space sustainable for all future generations. In fact, she notes that if this technology really gets going in earnest, it could allow for much more ambitious space missions. Should we ever want to go to Mars, we're gonna have to bring things with us and things will break on the way. So you'll need to have some sort of repair function, refuel function to be able to make sure that the mission gets accomplished. This will be a big year for satellite servicing companies to prove that their technology is sound. Northrop Grumman has launched a demonstration mission to move a satellite to a different orbit. Astroscale is prepping for its launch, and Altius made a deal to install its grappling plates on the hundreds of satellites made by the company OneWeb, which wants to provide internet access through a huge constellation of satellites in low Earth orbit. If all goes to plan, satellite operators may breathe a little easier when they launch their spacecraft. If something breaks, they'll be able to call for a tune-up, just like we do here on Earth. One time my mom got me the um, Taj Mahal in Lego form. God. I mean, it took me like a full weekend to put it together, and then I was like, now what? <laughs> Shoot. Okay, what do I do with the little tabs? I don't like this.